Okay, guys, I'm not drawing the picture unless it's especially confusing. Um, number one wanted area, which the formula for area is pi times r squared. The r in this problem is 3, so I would have left it as 9 pi, and I'm done. I'm going to leave all mine as, as a pi, okay? Number two, same thing, except um, the radius in this problem is not 14. That's the diameter, so the radius would be half of that, which is 7 which means the answer is 49 pi. Number three, find the length of each arc. Okay, the length of each arc, I know I need a proportion, so I'm gonna go ahead and set that up. Um, there's going to be the arc length, which we don't know, over circumference. So circumference is two times pi times r, and the r in this one is 16, equals the angle which is 75 over 360. And then I'm going to cross multiply. So 360 times x equals, okay, what is 16 times 2? I think that's 38. And then I'm going to do 38 times 75. Well, this is a fun problem. 5 times 8, 49, 6, 5, 26, Two eight. Oh my gosh, this is terrible. Okay, um, that, I'm getting 2850. I hope I did that right. Uh, then we're going to divide by 360, divide by 360, and I'm going to go ahead and cross out a zero because that's just a cool trick. I know you're dividing by 10 immediately and reducing your fraction. Uh, now, the only things that go into this are like you know, 4 and 9 and 3. So let me just see if any of those go into this. Um, 4 does not. 9 does not. Um, 3 does. Okay, so 3 does. So let me divide everybody by 3. So if I divide that by 3, that's going to be a 95 pi over 12 and that does not reduce so that's what I'm getting for number three I hope I math that right send me an email if I didn't and I'll fix it number four um, same thing you're finding the arc length now this one's a little tricky because notice what they bolded they actually bolded that ginormous outside chunk which is fine um, we're still gonna do this um, this is gonna end up a 10 pi because the radius was 5 so 2 times 5 times pi that's a 10 pi over here, the angle is 285 over 360. So 360x equals 10 pi times 285. So 360x equals 2850 times pi. Divide by 360, divide by 360. And oh my gosh, is this the same dang thing we had before? Yes, it is. C number three. I'm getting the same thing. And so when you reduce that, I think we're all good. I think it works out. Okay, that was fun. All right, next, number five. Now we are going to find the area of the sector. So it's still a proportion, except now instead of circumference, we're going to do pi r squared. Okay, so pi r squared goes on the bottom. My r in number five is a five. So 25 times pi here. And then the angle is a 60. And you know what? I'm looking at this before I multiply. Look how easy it's going to be to go ahead and simplify this fraction. Then when I cross multiply, it's easier. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and reduce the zeros. And then what is 6 over 36? Well, that's 1 sixth. So I just reduced my fraction first, and that's perfectly fine. Then when you cross multiply, sometimes it makes it easier. And that one made it a whole lot easier. So I'm getting 25 pi over 6. And that would be my answer for 5. Number 6, uh, same thing. It's that weird outer chunk this time. So it's going to be x over. Now it's pi r squared. So my r is 10. So 10 times 10 is 100. Over here it's 300 over 360. I'm going to go ahead and reduce these zeros like I did a minute ago. If you want to keep reducing, then keep reducing. Um, 3 goes into both of these, right? 3 goes in there 10 times. 3 goes in there 12 times. Oh, wait, that reduces to 5 sixths. 
So look at all that reducing before I even start. Now I'm going to cross multiply and get 6x equals 500 pi. Divide by 6, and there's your answer. I don't think that that breaks down. Um, maybe 3? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think that works. So I think that's your answer. All right, cool. Now we move on to the fun ones, and these probably hurt your head a little bit. Find the measure of the arc or the central angle indicated. Assume that lines which appear to be diameters are actually diameters. Okay, so on a problem like this, it's asking you to find the measure of GFH. Now, it gave you three letters instead of two because it wants you to travel around the circle in that order. So look at G, then F, then H. It wants that huge chunk of circle. Okay? So, this one may be better if I draw it. Teach, teach, whoa. Okay, so this is 130. This is 65. And we know this. It's not labeled, y'all, but look. If there's a 71 here and this is in the center, then this is also 71. That's one of our rules from the other paper. These match if it's in the center. So, it wants this. Well, how much is the whole circle? Well, the whole circle is 360. And you know the other three pieces, so just subtract them off. And if you subtract them off, you will get your final answer, okay? So let me grab a calculator and do that. So I'm getting 94 after I type that into my calculator, okay? And that makes sense. If you go back and check yourself and add them all up, it will equal up to 360. Okay, number 8. On number 8... It wants the measure of, that looks like an IHK. So when I look at my picture, it looks something like that. This is a 110. This is a 46. This is a 159. And it wants IHK. Okay, so it wants from I over to H, which is here over to K. Okay, so what it's asking for, guys, is that whole piece right there. IHK, it wants that, um, that angle. So if this is 159, then from here to here, that is also 159. And now all I have left to do is figure out how much this piece is. And then I can add those two pieces together, and it'll pull everything together. So it's the same thing as before. The whole way around the circle is 360. Okay, so if I take 360 and subtract this piece of 159, and then the other piece of 46, and then the other piece of 110, then I'll get this. Okay, so let me do that real quick. 360 minus 159 minus 46 minus 110. I'm getting 45 for this piece here, which means this is 45. So if it wants those two together, then I'm just adding 45 and 159. 204 should be your answer for I to the middle 2K. All right, let's look at the next couple. Okay, so number nine is actually not too horrible if you compare it back to your notes. It wants this angle that's touching the inside side of the circle. And if you look back at the relationship there, I had let you know that this is twice as much as this. Or this is half as much as this. So just take half of 142. I'm getting 71, and that is your answer. Number 10 is the same as number nine. The only thing is this is weird, right? Like if this confused you and you're like, why is that there? Okay, the answer is to confuse you, okay? It doesn't have any bearing on the problem. Ignore it, ignore, ignore. And now this looks the same as this one, okay? So if this is 100 from here to here, then this angle's not 100, but it's half of 100, which is 50. Okay, now we move on to a more fun one. I love these ones that crisscross in the middle. If you're looking for the angle, you just take the average of the intercepted arcs. So the average of this one plus this one. Um, and that's because the angle is here. So you always want to look at which angles they're trapping on both sides here. So it's this arc and this arc. So what is 185 
plus 55 divided by 2. Well, if we type that in the handy dandy calculator, which I'm a big fan of right now, I'm getting 120. Yay! And then number 12, looking at number 12, um, this is one of those where you're looking for an angle on the outside. So if you look back at your notes, an angle on the outside tells you to take the bigger arc minus the baby arc. Okay, so the bigger one is labeled. It's 238. So 238 minus, we need the baby one, divided by 2. Now the baby one on this one is all the way from here to here, and they did not label it. But, 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 we know all the way around the circle is 360, right? So if they gave you that all of this was 238, if you just subtract the 238 from 360, you're going to get 122. That is what the remainder of the circle is. So my baby one here is this 122. So I can do 238 minus 122 and then divide that one by 2 and I'm getting 58 degrees. So hopefully somebody got that one right. If so, good job. If not, maybe it makes sense now even with all my scribble scrabble techniques here. Okay, number 13, this is one of those where I see an angle touching the side of the inside, okay? And it's telling me this is 148, so what's that relationship? They're not the same, but this one is half of this. So take half of that, divide it by 2, I'm getting a 74. And 14's the last one, and it's another one where they cross on the inside. Whee! Okay, where did they put the angle? This is what they want. So if this is what they want, we need to be looking at these arcs. Okay, did they label those for us? Yes, they did. This one is 80. This one is 114. And what do we do with these? We average them. So 114 plus 80 divided by 2. And when you do that, 114 plus 80 is 194. Divide that by 2, I'm getting 97. So that's what goes in there for that missing angle. All right, cool. So circles, you won't be doing these for a long time, okay? <laughs> like, uh, I don't want you to stress out if this was hard because this is closer to the end of the year. These last two weeks are closer to the end of the year. So, um, you know, difficulty level increases as you go through the year. By the time you get to these in April or May, it's going to be easy because you're going to have done all this other stuff. And then you can come back to this video or the other video and watch them and get a refresher. Um, but I think you're going to be okay. Hopefully it wasn't too terrible. Um, let me know if it was. We'll talk. Bye.